So you want to change your life in a year. You want to completely change your life. You want to actually improve yourself, transform your life, however you want to put it. Well, let me tell you right now, it is very possible. And I'm actually going to give you a three-step, no BS guide to do just that. But first, I want to take you back to the beginning of my journey, where it all started for myself, to help explain the process that I'm going to lay out for you in this video. So it's back in 2020, I'm watching a bunch of self-improvement content. I've never even improved myself in my life other than back in high school when I used to play basketball, but that's beside the point because at this point in my life in 2020, I was a degenerate. I didn't do anything to help myself. I played video games, smoked weed, and watched porn and jerked off all day. Like literally, I didn't do anything. I didn't have a job at this time, didn't have, I wasn't in school, I was literally a loser. Then I stumbled across self-improvement content. And you know what's interesting is I started watching all these videos. You got this guy telling me, oh, you should do semen retention. You got this guy telling me, yeah, you need to work out. You got this guy telling me, oh, meditate. This guy cold showers. This guy read more books. This guy journal. Matt Spears telling you to do no fat. Matt Spears telling you to work out. Like a bunch of, a clusterfuck. And I was confused. I'm like, well, shit, there are so many good habits that I can implement. But I'm sitting here like watching these videos like, well, damn, I still jerk off. Damn, I'm still addicted to weed. What the fuck am I supposed to do? So instead of being a dumbass, like most people, because most people think, hmm, these are all great habits. Let me try every single one and try to implement them every single day. That's like jumping from level zero to level 100. That's like playing on Hall of Fame mode when you can't even handle the rookie mode yet. So that's why a lot of people fail in their self-improvement journey because they try these seven different habits and sure, on day one, they complete all seven habits. They check off their little, their little boxes on their tracker. And by the way, I'm guilty of telling you to do all these habits, of course. But let me tell you right now, the better way to do it, and this leads me to step one of our guide, is to pick one habit at a time. I couldn't just start all five of these habits because I knew I would fail. I knew I would do them for the first day, and then the next day, a little resistance would hit, and I'd be like, ah, fuck that, I don't want to do it. So I decided to choose one habit, and that was working out. I said, you know what, I'm going to master one habit and get super consistent at that before I try other habits. So I started lifting every single day. One of the best decisions of my life. If you are a beginner to self-improvement, you must start lifting. That should be the foundation of your self-improvement journey. That should be the building block. Because think about it, you want to look good, right? You want to feel good about yourself. You want to be proud of what you see in the mirror. You need a good body for that. You can't look in the mirror and have a shitty body and be proud of yourself, no. So I started with the gym because I was not proud of the way I looked. I didn't like my body. I wanted to build muscle. I wanted to look good. Then after building the habit of going to the gym, it takes about two to three weeks to build a habit. So within that two to three weeks, I wasn't even doing anything else besides going to the gym every single day. I'd come home and watch TV and play video games. But at least I was hitting the gym. That is progress. You see, a lot of people have this ego where they think, oh, I'm too good to do this shit like dude lower your ego tell yourself i suck that's what i did i literally told myself well i suck i'm not gonna be able to do seven habits in one day and continue that for the rest of my life fuck no i have to start small so i chose one habit i went to the gym the next thing i chose and this is very interesting you don't actually have to choose a habit to add to your life you can choose a habit to remove from your life so i decided to remove weed next thing you know another 30 days go by boom i'm now weed free so my mind is so much sharper. I'm now 60 days into hitting the gym, so I'm looking more strong and more jacked. I mean, not jacked, but you, you get the point. I was looking better. Just like that, in two months, I'm already a changed man. I'm already a different person to myself, a different version. This is how easy it is to improve. And I say easy, you know, it's not easy, right? There's gonna be resistance, but we'll get to that later. Next thing I did, all right, boom. Now it's time to master no fap. Now it's time to stop choking my chicken and <clears throat> all right? Enough of that. So I focused entirely on no fap. And I don't mean like, oh, I was autistically focusing on it. Like, well, probably I was back then. I was like, day one, day two, day three, etching it into my wall. But like, in all seriousness, taking it one habit at a time is what allowed me to make so much progress in just one year. And honestly, it was only six months. It was only a six month period. Because all right, boom, now I'm retaining my seed. Now I'm working out every single day. By the way, working out is your building block because you're not gonna be successful with NoFap if you're not hitting the gym and transmuting your energy. I wasn't gonna be able to quit weed if I wasn't hitting the gym every single day. You need to have this building block right here, that foundation. Build your freaking body, dude. I cannot stress this enough. 
anyway, chances are if you're watching this, you already build your body. So good on you. I'm proud of you, bro. I'm very proud of you. Just like I'm proud of my younger self. Next thing I did is I started to meditate and I just stuck with it. Just kept showing up. After that, I added cold showers into my life. After that, I added reading into my life. So if you think about it, I added the gym, meditation, cold showers, and reading. And I took away weed and porn and also social media and video games, but whatever, that's for another video. So the amount of progress I made in six months is insane. I completely changed who I was in literally six months. So if you're thinking, oh, this is gonna take a whole year, it's not. And I only added four new habits. It's not like I added all seven of these self-improvement habits, no. I did four things and stuck to those every single day, but took it one at a time. And here's the thing, I know I've been guilty of telling you, all right, do all of these habits, but the problem is that's not what I did. So now I'm telling you exactly what I did to help you transform your life. And it was just doing one thing at a time, making one thing into a habit so then I can add another habit and then turning that into a habit so then I can add another habit and it just, it keeps going and going and going. By the end of the year, you could have six new habits that you do every single day that are literally changing your life. Now, the other important thing I forgot to mention is that you always have to ask yourself, why? Why am I doing this habit? Why? Am I working out? Why do I want to work out? Okay, boom, well, I don't like my body. I'm flabby. I wanna lose weight so I can look good. I can look at myself in the mirror and be proud of what I see. I can walk around with more confidence because I like the way I look and then also be able to attract more girls into my life, of course. Here's why this is so important because if you don't ask yourself why, you are literally just doing these habits for no good reason. You're just crossing out on your habit tracker. But are you making any progress? What is it? What is the goal in doing these habits? That's how you actually improve yourself is to think, hmm, why am I even doing this? Why did I get on semen retention? Well, I wanted to experience the energy levels. I wanted to stop nutting all the time and wasting my life force energy. I wanted to experience mental clarity, get away from the porn brain so I could actually level up, so I could manifest the life of my dreams. Now, why did I want to meditate? Well, the first reason why was because I heard that it helps with semen retention, which it does, because you're able to now circulate your energy. You have, like Your sexual energy is very potent. It's very powerful and potent energy. So it's circulating through your body at times when you're horny. And so being able to practice meditation daily is gonna circulate that energy. It's gonna move the energy around and not keep it stagnant in your nutsack and make you want to <clears throat> So that's one reason. The other reason was I wanna be more present. I want better mental health. I want better conversations with people. So now when I talk to people, I'm more present. When I'm talking to my mother, I'm more present with her. I'm more loving with her. Same with my girlfriend. I'm more present. I'm more loving with her. And this is a lifelong battle. But back then, that is why I wanted to meditate. Always ask yourself, why are you doing the habit? Why did I want to start reading? I needed to learn more things. I was curious. I'm a student for life. You should be as well. Why did I start doing cold showers? Well, I wanted to level up my discipline. I wanted to force myself into uncomfortable situations so I could get comfortable being uncomfortable. There's always a reason for why you're doing these habits. Don't just take my word that, oh, cold showers are good. Oh, no fap is good. Ask yourself why? Because everybody is different. You see, I didn't really start journaling until like fucking two years into learning about self-improvement because there was always just this resistance to it. I never had a reason why. I never could figure out what is my reason for why I should be journaling. So I didn't do it. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to do every single habit to change your life. But this leads me to step two of our guide, which is push through the resistance. So like I just said, when I was journaling, I would get resistance to it, like, ah, what am I even doing this for? Like, ah, I don't wanna do this. Same with the gym. When you start, when you first start going to the gym, there's going to be resistance. You're gonna wake up one day and be like, ah, my sleep was shit. I feel like shit. I don't wanna go. Dude, that's your lower self talking. That's, your, that's the low version of you who wants to keep you stuck. Do you wanna change your life? There's going to be resistance. Nothing that is worth having in this world is going to come easy. There's always going to be some form of resistance. When I was quitting weed, what was the resistance? The resistance was, oh man, I really want to smoke weed. I was fiending for that shit, itching for it. 
push through the resistance. It's just a temporary feeling. It's not gonna last forever. On the flip side, meditation and working out, you just go even when you don't feel like it. Listen to your higher self, the highest version of you. He wants what's best for you. Would he go to the gym even when he's tired, a little run down, a little sick? Of course he would. Don't be a pussy, just go. If meditation is a habit you really want to incorporate into your life, then you're going to have to push through the resistance of not wanting to do it. Every single day, just show up. And if you miss a day, oh well. Next day, you're right back on the horse. It's really that simple. Pick one habit at a time, and then push through the resistance to doing that habit for a few weeks. And then after a few weeks, what happens? The gym becomes fun. You like going to the gym. You like seeing bigger biceps in the mirror. After getting on a streak of NoFap for fucking three weeks, after not releasing in three weeks, how do you feel? You feel amazing. It gets easier. There's less resistance. You're able to just sit with the horny feeling and not be a little monkey spaz who has to release it all the time. No, you just sit with it. You let it pass because you know it's a feeling and you know that the feelings pass. I'm trying to break this down in a very simple to understand way so that you can actually change your life. You can actually improve yourself. You don't have to do every single fucking habit under the sun. Start with one. Like I'm telling you back then in 2020 when I was just starting self-improvement, I was still doing instant gratification activities. Even to this day, of course, I still do instant gratification activities. It's about balance. It's about finding the right balance. The last thing I'll say about that is like, after pushing through the initial resistance, self-improvement is so fun. It's so fun because why? Think about it. You're making progress. You're seeing physical results in the real world. You're not just scratching off a habit on a tracker every single day and mindlessly doing them. No, you've set the intention for why you're doing something and now you're seeing the results from it because you've set that intention. And because you weren't a dumbass who did 17 different habits in one day and thought, oh, I'm making so much progress. Like maybe dude, but like, why are you doing all 17 of those habits? Do you have a solid reason? Maybe you do, good for you. But like, it's fun, bro. Leveling up is fun. You've probably heard this saying where progress creates happiness. The reason a lot of people are depressed is because they have nothing, they're not striving for anything. They're not making any progress. Progress creates happiness. Let's move on to step three of our guide, which is set goals. So you pick one habit at a time, you've pushed through the resistance, and now you just wanna set goals based on real life things. Sure, you can have self-improvement goals like, this year I wanna meditate more. This year I wanna read X amount of books. That's fine, but the whole point of self-improvement is to become the version of yourself who can achieve real life goals. What are your dreams? What are your aspirations? What do you want to achieve this year? And like I just said, I get it. If you're a beginner on self-improvement, it's great to have self-improvement based goals. That's fine, but you also need to have real life goals. Going back to my journey, the goals that I had in 2020 slash 2021 were, well, one was to bulk up to 180 pounds, right? I wanted to get bigger, more muscular. I wanted to be jacked. And I, I would say I achieved that. I'm still, you know, every single day working on my body. But anyway, the other goal I had was to save up $10,000 into my bank account, which meant, oh damn, I have to be disciplined because I had to work a full-time job. I had to go to school every single day and I had to make time for the gym and my other habits that I built, reading, meditation, and so on. I had to be disciplined. That's where self-improvement comes in. I was not gonna build $10,000 up into my bank account if I wasn't on self-improvement, if I was still a degenerate weed head. I'd be wasting all my money on weed, first of all. If I was still jacking off, I wouldn't have the motivation to even go to work. Self-improvement allows you to become the version of yourself who can achieve your goals. If I had never saved up that $10,000 into my bank account, you wouldn't see me on camera because I wouldn't have been able to take the risk of having zero dollars coming into my bank account for like seven months, six months. Since I had that money saved up, I was able to move back with my mom in this home, start my channel, and go all in. Anyway, what do you want to accomplish? What is it? What kind of career are you seeking? What kind of business do you want to start? What is your goal? What kind of, What is your income goal for this year? What is your body weight goal for this year? Do you want to bulk up to this amount? Do you want to lower your weight to this amount? I'll tell you right now, one of my goals this year is to get 100,000 subscribers. 
And to be honest with you, I know I'm gonna hit it. All right, it's only a matter of time. I know I'm getting 100,000 subscribers. What does this mean? This means I have belief. With belief, I now must take action. After taking action, I must now stay consistent. You can achieve anything you want in this world as long as you have belief, you take action, and you stay consistent. It's that simple. Your dream life is literally, the equation is your dream life equals your beliefs, plus the action you take, plus the consistency at which you take that action. That's all it is, dude. And by the way, everyone's different. Everybody's journey is different. I explained to you which habits I added in what order, just to give you a reference, just to show you that I didn't add 17 different habits at one time. I took it one at a time. Your journey is different. Ask yourself why. Why am I doing this? Your goals should be the reason. You need to be the version of you who can achieve these goals. Because you right now can't achieve these goals. <sighs> Become the version of you who can. I believe in you. Now you just need to believe in yourself. I hope this video was valuable. I tried to make it as simple and easy for you to understand as possible. For any experience level on self-improvement, like... Even for me, I'm using this system this year. I have my goals. I'm still taking it one habit at a time. Like I was saying, I'm gonna implement journaling as my next habit, and I'm gonna push through the resistance of just doing it every single fucking day. Why do I wanna journal? I want a clearer mind. I want a sharper mind. I wanna get out the negative thoughts onto paper and experience the benefits of just having that sharper mind and clearer mind. That's why. So anyway, like I said, hope it was valuable. Much love, bro. Like it if you want, comment if you want. I will see you in the next video. Peace.